Hi, this is your host Abdul Bharatiya and we are back with our 2023 predictions and today we have with us once again Michel Tricard, co-founder and CEO at Airbyte. Michel, it's great to have you on the show. Hi, this is great to be there again. Yeah, before I ask you to grab your crystal ball and I'll share your predictions, I would love to know a bit about the company itself. So Airbyte is an open source data integration platform and what we do is we help company break down any kind of data silos that they have and move data from any sources, whether it's an API, file, spreadsheet, database, and bring that into the destination of their choice, whether it's a warehouse, whether it's another SaaS service, basically every place where this data will bring more value to their business. And this is what we've been doing over the past three years. And today we have about 50,000 open source deployments. We released a cloud product in a in, uh, in uh, Q2 this year, and things are going pretty well. Excellent. Now it's time for you to pick your crystal ball and tell us what predictions you have for us. I would say the first thing is a lot of companies are actually completely changing their data strategy. And with the economy slowing down, it's a moment when companies reflect on their fundamentals and invest in these big projects. And what we'll say is just that warehouses are going to get more and more used. And as companies detect and understand the value of it, they will want to push more and more data to these systems. And that means that more and more in-house connectors will need to be built to get databases, internal APIs, data directly into these warehouses. And they will have more and more custom needs. So they are building their data product. They have the specificities of their business. And this type of uh, custom list will need to be encoded into solution. The second prediction is more around how blurry it's going to become between data warehouses and data lakes. And we can already see that with what Snowflake did with being compatible with Iceberg is the, st the separation of storage and compute will really blur the limit between the, like, these warehouses and this uh, data lake. The last one is more going to be around uh, like how open source will continue to be a key driver for data projects. And we see, to, we see today with data integration, we see today with data observability, we, do, we see it for uh, data uh, cataloging, etc. There are a lot of solutions that are coming on the market and that are going to be adopted more and more by these companies. So, this is really how we, we see the, the future with, uh, with Airbyte. And it's just, and all of that is driven by company focusing on their data fundamentals during that low economic period. We've talked a lot about reverse ETL over the past uh, two or three years, was you know, pulling data outside of data warehouse and bringing it into APIs and services. And we really see that as actually the activation of data. And from there we see what we believe is gonna happen is that the concept of reverse ETL is gonna change and people are realizing, are going to realize that it is not just a data product, but it is really an automation product. And that will come with the requirement for a lot of new safeguards because reverse ETL is not just data, it's really automation, it's activation, meaning that it touches critical systems and if you have data issues, the impact on the business are going to be huge. So that's why this is going to move away from just the data space and it's going to require more data quality, more lineage, stronger processes internally in companies to actually leverage solutions that the market calls reverse ETL today. Excellent. Uh, thanks for sharing those uh, predictions. Now, if I ask you, what is going to be the focus for the company in 2023? So for Airbyte, we will have two main focus. First one is continue to address the long tail and the customizability of the platform. So ensuring that every one of our users can pull data across every one of their silos. And we call that ubiquity. The second one is going to be around giving control over data to our customers. And it means how do we ensure that the data movement can happen in the safety of your cloud as a user? 
you, a lot of companies have very sensitive data, whether it's going to be PCI certified data, whether it's uh, they have like SOC2 requirements, etc. And not all data can actually go to a SaaS service. And what we want to do really with Airbyte is move the execution of the movement directly into our customers' infrastructure. And that's going to be, these two are going to, like the long tail and the movement are going to be the two main focus of the company in 2023. Can you also talk about what are the challenges that you see ahead that will even become bigger challenges in 2023? And you also see that, hey, these are the challenges that we at Airbyte would like to uh, tackle. So, I mean, there are the macro challenges. So at that point, it will be how is the economy going to evolve? Um, because in my mind, we've seen the first two waves where it affects B2B relationship. Now we're going to see how it affects B2C relationship. But B2C relationship, once they're affected, have another effect on B2B. So this is something that I believe we'll see in 2023, where if people consume less, how does that affect B2B? Um, so that's going to be a, a challenge. And we see that as a way for Airbyte to just show that, yeah, you can bring Airbyte within your infrastructure directly. You can just integrate an open source software and you can decide also how much you want to be spending on a data solution and making the trade-off between open source with internal teams or using a cloud product. So for us, that's the, the challenges we see is like, how do we navigate in that environment where companies are more conscious about price, are more conscious about how they spend their team's time and also how they uh, want to also revamp their fundamentals and data fundamentals. Michelle, thank you so much for taking time out today and uh, share your predictions, also talk about the challenges. And I would love to have you back on the show in 2024 so that we can also see how many of your predictions uh, turn out to be true. I did not want to tell that to you in the beginning so that you are under pressure, but now we got that out as well. But I really appreciate your time and I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Thank you for having me.